today I'm going to show you how to make an IV kit or a blood draw kit that you can do from home. First thing you're going to need um, is some rubber tubing. You'll also want a piece of synthetic skin. This is tattoo skin, so it's like tattoo practice skin. It works great. Um, you'll want a bag for your blood, fake blood to go in. Um, these are a Halloween prop, like a party favor. It's like um, a bag you can drink out of, a blood bag, but works perfect for this. And this one I just recently used and rinsed out. That's why there's liquid already in it. Um, you'll also want a strap. And you'll need your fake blood, or you can use Gatorade or any other red liquid. Um, this is stage blood, and I have diluted it down because it's actually a little bit thick, um, so it doesn't flow as easily through the tube, so it makes it harder to get a flash to show up on your IV. But if you dilute it down, it does fine. So, so you'll want your fake blood or any other red liquid. Um, and then when you're setting this up, you'll also want something to use as an arm, which I prefer to use a towel. So um, I just take a regular bath towel. Um, Preferably one that's old or you don't mind if it gets a little stain on it. You want to roll that up tightly and then use hair ties or rubber bands, whatever you've got available. Um, put one on each end and that's going to hold it rolled up. And this works great as an arm. I can get that on there. If you do want to make sure your towel stays um, clean, you can put um, like some plastic wrap or saran wrap over it. Um, for the most part, you don't make a mess, but you it can, it can. So if it leaks at all, this is gonna stop the leaks. And as you can see, I also have a um, pad covering up my table here. This is an absorbent pad. So when you're using your kit, you'll want something absorbent like that. So I'm going to, I've got this ready to go. I'm going to set this aside. Um, the next thing that we're going to get ready. Oh, the other thing we need is a connector. Where did my connector go? Right here. Sorry. So you also want a connector. And I'll tell you too, so the tubing is quarter inch um, rubber tubing. And I chose quarter inch because the blood bags have quarter inch rubber tubing. Therefore you need a quarter inch connector. And these are a little strange. They were kind of hard to find. I did find them on Amazon. I found a lot of what I use on Amazon or hardware store. Um, Let's say we don't want to connect that yet. Before we connect these, we want to fill our blood bag. And another good thing to do before you do all that is clamp the end of your tubing. These clamps um, actually come with the blood bags. So, and if you don't get clamps with it, um, you can, you'll want to find something that'll clamp your tubing. So we're gonna put a clamp on the end of the tubing and we're just gonna go ahead and clamp that so that we don't forget later on. Um, the other thing that comes with the blood bags is usually a syringe that you can use to fill them up, okay? I, since I use the fake blood, I put it in this um, cap tip container and that also works really well for filling, oh, if I can get the lid off of it, for filling the bags. You'll want to fill the bags um, 
over a cloth or something because sometimes it can leak or spill. Um, so we will just put this in here and start squeezing some of this fluid into the bag. It's kind of hard to squeeze it in there because there's not air to come back into it very well. So, all right. So once we get our blood or our red fluid into the bag, then we can attach our connector. We've got a little bit of blood on the fingers. We'll just wipe it on there. Okay. So the connectors, we want to make sure this is on. If it feels loose on the connector at all, you'll want to um, maybe wrap an extra piece of tape around it. Um, these connectors, I found if you push hard enough, you can get it to go over the second bump and then it seems to stay on there pretty secure. It doesn't want to go over it all the way. Ooh, come on, there it goes. Okay, so we got it over that second lump. So that's that feels really secure. See, that's not coming out. Okay, and you might want to wear gloves while you're messing with the, the fake blood because it can get you red. So then we want to attach our rubber tubing here. And you want to try to get that over that second lump as well of the connector tube. Oh, come on. You can do it. Okay, there. Okay, it's there. So, her tubes are connected. So now, we're ready to prime our tubing. So when you turn it over, it doesn't really do anything. Your blood bag, you're going to want to have this up out of the way because gravity is what's going to put enough pressure for it to make a, a flash on your, when you start your IV. So I don't have anything great to hang it with. So I usually put like a push pin in it and then I attach it to the wall. Usually higher than this, but I don't want to go too high because I don't think you'll be able to see it. Okay, so once you've got that up, if you have anything to hang it from right here, that's great. Do that. So then we want to prime our tubing. So we're just going to unclamp this and let the fluid flow through it until um, it gets close to the end. And then we want to clamp it so that it doesn't leak out. Okay, so there we've got blood in our tubing. So now we'll go ahead and get our skin situated. So I have a um, little badge holder paper puncher thing. And so I punch my own holes in these. Um, I noticed there are some online on Amazon that you can buy that already have the holes. And the first ones I didn't make long enough and so they tore through. So this one here is like a practice sheet for me. Um, <laughs> so it's got extra holes in it, but you really just need one on each side. So with our Velcro strap, we want to string it through these holes. Um, keep the soft side toward the skin. Okay, we're gonna, there's a hair on there string this through there okay and then to help secure our tubing we're going to slide our tubing underneath there in the back okay and that's going to kind of help hold it in place so now we're ready to attach it to our towel or which is going to act as our arm okay so we're just going to place this over the towel and we will wrap it around here. Okay, and then we're gonna pull that Velcro tight. All right, and that's gonna hold our, our skin in place for us. All right, and the tubing, at, oh, it slides a little. So we can adjust this so the skin's a little tighter, it can be looser. 
But anyway, you can see um, it's not real obvious where the where the tube is going. It's a little obvious, but not not much. But you can palpate, and you can feel that tube just like you could a vein. Okay, you've got just as much chance of missing that tube as you do a vein, and you've got as much chance of not going deep enough or going too deep. So it gives you a really good simulation um, of starting your IV when you put the put the needle in there. Um, once you get it in, it will give you a flashback. With the tube being latex, it doesn't leak. It is reusable because like I said, the, the latex kind of seals itself up. Um, after a while, you'll need to replace your skin because you'll start seeing numerous holes in it depending on how often you practice. But ultimately, it's great. It can be reused. I do recommend um, after using it, if you're not gonna use it for a little while, I recommend draining the liquid back out of it. Um, I found one that I had sitting for a few weeks and it looks like it started to get a little bit moldy. So, so that can happen over time. So just a note, if you're gonna let it sit for a while or for like a week or two, pour it back into the bottle so it doesn't, doesn't go bad. Um, but yeah, that's the IV kit, um, or practice kit. You can get, um, you can make these real easily at home if you don't want to make them. I have some for sale on my website on nursegrower.com. So these are what you get. You can order it with, um, the little tube of the fake blood. So... I am happy to sell these to people and I'm happy to tell you how to do it yourself so that you can do it yourself. But this kit here, I am happy to sell to you. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm constantly coming up with ways to um, make learning and practicing easier from home and I will be posting more videos soon. Um, of other skills that can be practiced or practice kits. So anyway, thank you for watching.